All right, everyone. Hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. And today is a, a continuation of the deity discussion series, which I host here on this channel, usually once a month. Uh, today is episode six. Um, we're going to be talking about the goddess Frigg. And thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Jesse, and I host weekly videos here on this channel every Sunday, um, where I'm co co covering various topics of Norse heathenry, that type of stuff. Uh, so if this is a subject matter that you're interested in, please go ahead and become a subscriber to the channel. Click bell for notifications so that way you're always notified when I upload new content. And never forget, this is a, a channel that I express a lot of my own personal views on. It's not a one and done type of thing. It doesn't, it's not meant to represent the entire worldview of heathenry uh, because I don't think anybody can really have that ability to say it. This is a lot of it's my views on things. So kind of bear that and keep that in mind. Um, you're going to find some links down in the description for ways that you can support Midgard Musings. There's a tip jar uh, that greatly helps uh, you know, support this channel. Um, there's a Teespring store for merchandise, the Facebook page, all that stuff. If you head on over to follow those links, those are ways that you can support this channel. Uh, but definitely thank you so much for supporting in the form of your views and subscriptions. They do mean a lot. Um, so today, like I said, this is going to be the uh, sixth episode of the Deity Discussion series. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Frigg. Um, and so I usually like to open up the deity discussions. Um, they're meant to kind of cover some of the historical things that we know, um, or, or some of the, you know, scratching the surface of some of the things that we know about the particular god or goddess of our uh, discussion. And then I always, always like to offer my own take on what it's like working with these deities, um, this god or goddess of, in question. Uh, if I've had any dealings with them in my own practices and kind of open the floor for everybody else to share their insight on it. So before we actually get started, we'll do the customary thing of lighting this candle. Hopefully it'll go. Usually it tries to sass me a little bit, um, not lighting. That was one and, one and done kind of deal right there. And then we'll get some incense going as well and uh, get right into this discussion. All right. That's a pretty vigorous flame there. I'm trying to get it under control. There we go. All right. So Frigg is um, probably one of the most important figures in the Norse uh, pantheon of gods and goddesses. She's the chief uh, of the queen, you know, the queen of the Yasir, the queen of, of Asgard, if you will. Um, she is known to be as the wife of the old father Odin. Um, she is Baldur's mother. Um, we'll get to talking about Baldur in a later uh, discussion, deity discussion uh, video. Um, but uh, Baldur is the, the most loved of all the gods. He was uh, killed through some treachery. And um, anyway, Frigg is Baldur's mother. Um, a lot of the things that Frigg will often be associated with in lore and mythology, some of the things that she's you know, concerned with or about um, are matters of love, um, the hearth and the home, um, motherhood, right? Um, and also she is, is what's called a volva. Um, she practices and, and can see the future. She, she has the gift of that, that prophecy, right? She, she practices what is called seder, uh, which is Norse shamanism, if you will. Um, so she has these magical abilities um, to see the future and and not only does she see the future but she has an active role in um, weaving the webs that the Norns feed to, uh, into the well of weird you know so the, the Norns are, are, are three sisters um, that kind of have to do with fate um, our own fates individually the fates of the gods the fates of of everyone in the in the nine realms, and uh, but Frigg knows the fate of all, both God and in man. Um, that which what she knows, uh, she never reveals, or at least not fully. Um, we'll get we'll get into talking about that here in just a minute. Um, but some of the history behind her name, um, the name Frigg is an old Norse word which can be translated to meaning beloved. Um, and in the origins. Um, of her name uh, are quite often believed to be having its roots um, or held in a much older 
uh, Proto-Germanic uh, goddess named uh, Freya. Um, we'll get into we're going to be get, getting into talking about the differences or similarities of Frigg and Freya, which in Norse mythology are two separate uh, goddesses. But some of the question arises is is Frigg and Freya actually one and the same? We'll get into be talking into that here in just a minute too. Um, so where does she preside over? Where does she you know where is her dwelling? Uh, she has a hall um, called uh, Fensalir, I believe it is. Um, and there's not a whole lot talked about in like poetic edda. I, I think there's something that maybe uh, about her hall in the uh, bold spa. Um, but there's one uh, old Icelandic poem or, or one skaldic poem called uh, Gilfagini, and um, it says in, in one of the stanzas there. I'm gonna just read it to you real quick. Um, it says uh, then it says uh, Gangler, excuse me, Gangleri, which are the Osinur. The Osinur are the female. Uh, goddesses, all right. Um, and Hor, who this individual he's talking with, said uh, Frigg is the foremost. Um, she has that estate which is called Fensalir, and it is most glorious. So it doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail about what this place is like. Um, we, I think, it, I think it's in in Volspa, um that says that you know this is where she weeps uh, for the death of Balder, um, but. We hear in this descriptive in this poem that it's it's talked about as being a pretty glorious place. I have heard um, from some newer, more modern um, texts, um, some more modern writings, that um, this this hall uh, uh, of hers, uh, Fence, uh, Fencelier, is where Freig will invite husbands and wives after they are dead. Uh, to come back and be reunited in her hall. Um, they kind of have a place where they can join one another's companionship after their death and, and not be threatened with the loss of the, or, or being disconnected again. So again, I don't know where that is getting drawn from in terms of any historical texts or if there's any backing in that. That's just kind of something I've heard. It's kind of a neat neat thing to think about. Um, um, but as I said earlier, you know, some of the what she does or what she is known for is uh, she has this, this, this great... Um, wheel that she weaves the wool um, or the threads um, that get fed to the or that, that get provided to the Norns to uh, to weave the web of weird and you know so and so forth so she stays there she does these things I've, I've also written uh, I think in some of the lore where it talks about her weaving the clouds on this great spinning wheel um, and uh, so these are some of the cool descriptive things that we know about what Frigg does where she you know, dwells, or her, what her hall may be like, things like that. Um, and she is she is associated, like I said before, with the whole thing of uh, the hearth and the home, beauty, love, um, marriage especially. Um, so for a lot of, um, uh, I think some, some rituals that you could say that where Frigg is invoked or called upon are, are those of, you know, love, you know, marriage rituals, things of that nature. Um, it, it, she would be called upon to bless um, those things. Um, and then when some of the other things that we hear uh, about Frigg is that she is silent and secretive um, because she does she, she knows the fate of all but she doesn't reveal what those fates are um, now when, when it comes to working with Frigg I've heard that for those that practice Seder you know the the, the, the Norse shaman uh, shamanistic approach the magical uh, approach uh, of things that uh, she is in a very important part in um, in, in working within ritual um, because like I said you're actually kind of getting into um, working with fate and trying to manipulate things to work out in the ways that you want them to um, and so where it comes down to the, the fates that she knows that she would not reveal sometimes I've heard it said that she will reveal certain things but you have to earn that trust and again not all of that which is revealed to you will be she'll kind of give you pieces of it or bits of it that sort of thing so that's some kind of cool stuff about Frigg um, now going back to you know what we were discussing earlier a little bit in the, in the video about the differences between or arguably the differences between Frigg and Freya and are they actually one and the same um, 
I'm going to just say for my part and in, in my own practices, I define them as two separate and different uh, entities or beings or deities, right? Two separate goddesses. Um, Freya being a specific figure um, who also has uh, connections or, or, or associations with matters of love, um, but not quite so, uh, I don't know, say the right word, not so structured, you know, kind of a bit more of the, the flighty, you know, uh, relationships that don't necessarily have any roots, whereas Freig is, is something that's, uh, or, or someone who I feel is much more connected to the relationships of marriage that are, you know, bonds tied by oaths and, and things like that, something that's much more strong in its, uh, in its nature. Um, Frey is kind of the partier type, um, Freig, which in some of the lore, she, she's, she, you know, she's, I think in Locusena, uh, Freig and Freya are, are talked about by Loki as, as, you know, being a bit promiscuous, that sort of thing. But again, the, con the, the connections between the hearth and the home that directly are tied to Freig are not so much with Freya. So I personally view them as separate deities. Now, the reason why it's you know, contended that they are one and the same, just under different names, is again, it goes back to the older um, Proto-Germanic uh, goddesses, uh, or goddess, um, that predate what has come into the Old Norse uh, Icelandic model of, of heathenry. I, so you've got a goddess or goddesses that existed in the older Germanic tribes, um, Freya, and from those names you get, you know, the linguistics of things evolve and change. It's, again, it's all regional, so you have to look at it that. Where in this region, they they deemed, you know, this one uh, de deity or figure as the, this goddess, and then later on, in different regions, you're going to get different takes on things, and so the the two could very possibly be one. I think that really has largely to do with what your views are, what your tribal views are, and what your kindred's views are. Uh, but me personally, I have a view that Frigg is definitely um, one goddess of herself and then Freya is one of herself and that they are two different beings even though similar in a lot of ways. Um, so now that we've kind of covered some of the what we do know about Freya there isn't a whole lot more I think out there. There, there there's probably a lot more that I'm missing in terms of specifics in the lore um, I think there's one instance where, you know, she's, she's known to outwit Odin, um, and I forget the name of that poem or where that poem's located. I'll have to go back and look. You may, if you're familiar with some of the, the, the myths and lore and uh, the Norse uh, mythology, you know, um, you may know what I'm talking about, but um, these are some of the things that we know about her. Um, some of this other stuff that we're going to go into now is, is my own view, right? Like my own personal experiences with for what I do. Um, or how I feel her presence when working with her in ritual. Um, so I've been a uh, heathen now for several years, about four years, going on close to four years, and in that time, you know, I've, I've definitely had Frigg as a, a presence in my life that I could tell that she was there. The kind of the mothering, loving, nurturing um, presence, you know, of, of, of that female, uh, that, that female presence, that, that motherly, you know, kind of love. Um, I've worked with her in ritual too, especially when it comes to matters of the hearth and home, because she is so strongly connected with those things. Um, so, like uh, for instance, I you know it was it was during our Yule celebration that uh, Frigg was one of the gods uh, or goddesses that was invoked during bloat, and um, offerings were made to her. Um, so when it comes to Family affairs, hearth and home, things of a, of of your relationship. That obviously, I'm you know I'm a married man, and anything that I look to to you know gain favor uh, for in, within my marriage, she will be one that I look to uh, to work with in ritual. Um, you, you could also look at it as you know for the mothers that are out there, um, she would be one to want to maybe um, you know be in good favor with um, for matters of of that sort of thing. Um, but that is what I look to Frigg for, um, is matters of the hearth and home, matters of my relationship, um, and if there's anything that would involve, um, you know, my, my own mother or motherly type things, um, that would definitely be something that I look to as well. And also for 
the, the, the Seder, you know, type work, any of the, the shamanic um, magical workings that we may deal with, she would definitely be one to want to um, become familiar with and, and, and close to, I feel. So that is my take on Frigg. I'm sure I'm not even barely scratching the surface on things because she is such an important part. We all have our own hearth cultures, our own home cultures, things like that. I'm sure we've all had experiences with Frigg that if you want to share, you can definitely do so down here in the comments. Let me know what your um, dealings with Frigg have been. And um, that, is, that is my take on it. Again, keep in mind that it's my view. It's not the, the one entire whole view of who Frigg is, is she, you know, is Frigg and Freya separate? You know, we can get into the whole historical aspects of that to determine if she is or isn't, but in, in my view, yes, they are two separate, uh, two separate beings for sure. So there's my take on this, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it around, and if you don't want to miss anything that I post later on, make sure bell notifications are enabled. Come back here on the page or on the channel tomorrow around 7 o'clock Central Standard Time when I go live here. I go live every Monday night. Um, it's just kind of a laid back, chill kind of discussion. Um, we will be having the winner announced for the giveaway item, which I'll call attention to once again here. I've spoken about this over the last uh, several weeks. It's a wood box that I uh, burned the Midgard Musings logo in. There's uh, all the way around the bottom is the Elder Fudark runes. And this will be an item that I uh, mail to one random winner. So check back tomorrow to see who the winner of that, um, that box is. So thanks again so much for watching, everybody. Tune in uh, tomorrow for that. And uh, next week we'll figure out what we're talking about when the time comes. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I got a list of things that I got to look over uh, to talk about. Everybody that's watching live on Facebook, don't go anywhere so I can continue to see what everybody's saying. And uh, I will see you guys all again in the next week's video.